A dozen wind turbines. It's a fitting first impression on the journey to Samsø. These days, the eyes of the world are on this island in the north of Denmark because the climate conference is going on. And Samsø, with a population of about 4,000 spread across 112 square kilometers, is something unique in the world, a model renewable energy community. People here used to live from agriculture, like the farmer I visit first. I want to know how the system here works, whether it really does work, and whether it could work elsewhere. Jürgen Treinberg is a dairy farmer with a herd of 140 cows. He also has his own wind turbine behind his barn and one out on the sea. Now he earns as much from electricity as he does with his cows. You see, we have a good wind here on Samsø. And so it's quite easy to put up some wind turbines. And we have a lot of straw on the fields, and why not? put it in the fireplace. So, and that will give a lot of work for people. They make the water pipes and everything. And now we earn money on it and we, use, and we are CO2 neutral and we don't need our, the oil from Iran. So. <laughs> so that's how it works. Jürgen shows me his heat exchanger. Through this? Yes, the down to the house. Yes. yes. Yeah. And it, the, enough it to cools to the milk in the barn, and the heat is used for his home. Oh, last winter we put uh, two times in the fireplace, and it's very strong wind, and it's very cold. That happened two times last winter. Yeah, okay. that was all. Okay. Jürgen Treinberg is just one example among many. The emissions from his tractor and all the other vehicles on the island are offset by the CO2 neutral energy produced by the wind turbines. I drive on to the Energy Academy in the village of Balan to learn more about the project. The first people I encounter are a TV crew from Japan. Journalists from around the world have come to the island, and they all come to the Energy Academy. The Energy Island project is coordinated here, in a low-energy building, of course. These are journalists from Slovenia. Today, there have also been reporters from France, Finland, and Taiwan. The project was launched 13 years ago by Zeran Hermansen, who today is something like a pop star of climate protection. But at first, the climate wasn't the point. This project is not a strictly ideological project. It, it's not for the environmental hippies. It, it, it's for normal people. I mean, no, hippies are also normal, but, but it's, 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 it's ranging from the right, left, party, political idealist, to the right conservative on the, on the other side, the liberalist or the market-oriented people. They have to talk together in this project so we can kind of make this community project work. So we cannot make the 100% idealistic project, the real green project. It has to be kind of a, a, a compromise of all sort of things. So this is, I think, the benefit of this project is that we actually made these two oppositions talk to each other and agree on this, this project. This is, this is where I think the, the real success is. People from the academy take me and other journalists to a local heat and power station. The villagers invested here and now they're saving a lot in electric bills since the plant uses straw for heating. Jesper Keems is one of the owners. So this is uh, the district heating plant of uh, Berlin and Bromby. And then um, and the 250 houses are connected to this plant. So it's based on straw, like you can see, and we have, uh, we have farmers on the island who are delivering straw to this, to this, uh, this heating plant. And it's pretty basic technology. You, you burn the straw, you heat up the water, and you send out the water to all the houses. And then you, the water will come back a little colder, and you will heat, reheat the water with, with some more fire. There are three district heating plants on Samsu. Two are powered with straw, and this one, on the north of the island, works on solar energy and wood pellets. It's operated by a local company, and the initiative behind it came from the village. It all seems so easy, 
But there was a lot of skepticism at first, especially among the older islanders. It was all new and seemed expensive. But a lot is made easier by the fact that everyone knows everyone else here. You can come inside and see what my house looks like in, inside, would you? Old house. Really Mrs. Old. Broken is well acquainted with Zeran Hermansen, the head of the academy. He's even brought the Chinese ambassador to see her. To me. Dear Mrs. Broken. <laughs> and what do you think about these uh, windmills like and all these energy I, I think they're fantastic. I really do. It, not because it's... Uh, but they do... We, did, we save a lot of money because they're here. Today, no one has a problem with the wind turbines. In fact, many would like to have one of their own. There is a lot of wind here, as well as other renewable energies, just as in most of the world. So I wonder whether a project like this could be done elsewhere. For instance, where it isn't so windy. And where there are more people and less room. These fishermen are restoring a historic boat. Pear would also like to have a wind turbine. Paul, said to be the island's oldest fisherman, already has one. It's good uh, for the people uh, in Ireland here. Eh? Mm -hmm. hmm? And why do you think so? Yeah, why? Uh, some, some must do something. <laughs> yes. And they start here, maybe. <laughs> Perhaps that's it. You have to start somewhere. I think maybe we need this as an example. And the point isn't how much wind there is, but that everyone works together to make it happen. But there are people who are farther along than others. Eric Koch Anderson is an organic farmer. <laughs> He's not as concerned with profits as he is with 100% organic farming. Here's the seed. That means I that his vehicles sure. run on biofuel he produced and himself from rapeseed. Can buy a vacuum cleaner. Last it he explains how it's tank. pressed here, and the oil goes into the tank. On the tractor. Anderson also shows me his solar collector the, uh, and invites me for tea. The other one is solar panels. They are made of water-based. The energy island That's doesn't go far power. enough for him. He'd like to see more enthusiasm and commitment. Yeah, very much. Mm -hmm. I'm an uh, organic farmer, too. Mm -hmm. Been uh, organic farming for 25 years. I ask him about his opinion, what else he thinks should happen on the island. We had a lot of uh, people coming and... Uh, and, uh, I hope we will keep the interest uh, uh, in coming and see how we're doing. I, I just uh, am afraid that when the convention is over, uh, people lose interest in coming here. Samsa is not an ecological paradise, and the islanders are no climate protection saints. But it's a good example of what's possible. If politicians want it, the technology is there, and the citizens get involved. <laughs>